The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one furlong to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. A very pleasant good morning, racing fans, and welcome here to Barks Racing for Let's Go Racing. It is Preakness Saturday. Yes, Preakness Saturday. We wrap up the, <laughs> <In> bizarre, <October. laughs> the bizarre Triple Crown season later this afternoon down at Pimlico, and we'll see uh, just who could get it done as Bob Baffert looks for yet another Preakness victory. We'll have some updates for you in just a moment. Our local race of the week, a high-level optional claimer at a mile, a field of a very competitive field of five. We'll have that coming up also. We'll also have coverage from both the West Coast and the East Coast here as we stop at Churchill Downs for the Grade 3 ACAC -AC with 10 Strike Racing and uh, Warriors Charge. And we'll also visit with Randy Allen for just a couple of minutes. He talks about his good friend Nick Sapinara who Absolutely. passed away in December. Hi, everybody. Keith Jones down on the beautiful first floor here at Parks Racing. of my man Dick Girardi <laughs> here in Dick. It's Preakness Saturday. It's Baltimore, but no crab cakes for you. Yeah, no, it's going to be the first time I have missed the Preakness since... 1978? That's sad. Oh, man, it's going to be heart, heartbreaking not to be in Pimlico, but you know what? It's 2020, and that's just the way it is, and we'll get to watch it, and we'll get to bet on it. Dick, uh, they actually drew the field yesterday, so we know what's going on here. We have a field of 11, and I think it's a terrific field. I think it's easily the best of the three Triple Crown races. The Belmont just didn't draw much of a, a crowd at all, and tis the law crushed them. The Derby had just too many horses with absolutely no chance. This is a race I can think you can make a case for four or five horses that would have a chance to win. It's competitive, there's speed, there's all kinds of really interesting handicapping angles at a practice. Dick, you mentioned Tis the Law just after we taped last week. We did get the news that came down that said right. he is not going to go to the Preakness Stakes, so he will be missing this one. Yeah, I think we kind of knew it. Barkley Tag was basically telling people, I don't want to run in this race. And uh, he finally persuaded the owner not to run, and he'll get the eight weeks to the classic where, of course, he's going to have to run up against not only the three-year-olds, but the best older horses in track. Right. Now, Dick Authentic drew post position nine. He's the nine to five favorite, as you mentioned last week. Every time Bob wins the Derby, he yes. wins the Preakness. Yep. But you know what? The circumstances this time with the Preakness are much different. Yeah, they are different. It's four weeks instead of two weeks. And I've always thought that the Baffert horses were in such great shape coming to the Derby and, and most of the Derby horses disappeared for the Preakness that he really had him over the barrel. So he's five for five with his Derby winners to the Preakness. This is different. I think it's a better field that typically shows up in the Preakness, uh, but it's still Baffert. He's going for Preakness win number eight. He also had two other winners, uh, both horses who actually, in my opinion, point given and looking at Lucky should have won the Derby were unlucky. So he's won the Preakness seven times. He's going free. Well, Dick, the major contender here is Art Collector and owner Bruce Lunsford, uh, who is excited no about doubt. being in the Preakness Stakes. This has been been really an odd year, obviously. The races are all at a different time. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it, the, the fact that the Derby wasn't the first race and that the Belmont was and all the things have happened, it's really, it's really kind of one race in a series. And, you know, it kind of fits. I may have told you this before. We kind of had a thought process that we would that we would have our own kind of triple crown where we would run in, you know, that we'd run at Bluegrass, we'd run in the Derby, and then run the Breeders' Cup. So I, I kind of look at it like, you know, it's fate. You just take what's what's given to you and hope for the best. And now we've got a little bit of a change of plans, and so we're going to hope we do well enough here to get to the Breeders' Cup. And I think we'll, we'll I think we'll be in uh, really very competitive. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really big about, you know, uh, giving horses the ability to, to go within themselves. And, you know, if you look at him today, work, and I told this to Tom, it's the first time I've seen him really look like he's almost a four-year-old. He's, he's bigger and stronger. He did it so easily. He came back. He's so calm. Um, I think what we've done by giving him time off and doing other things has really helped him. Well, Dick, of course, our collector, Major Chance, will have some picks later on in the show. But how about a Philly? We're going to get a Philly going in the uh, Yeah, I mean, look, Kenny McPeak's done a phenomenal job with Swiss Skydiver. He was thinking about the Derby. He said, you know, I don't, I don't think that's going to quite work. And I think that was the right move. He wasn't, she wasn't going to win the Derby. But, you know, why not? And, and if she runs well, you know, who knows? Uh, I'm sure I'll run back in the Breeders' Cup distaff. But 
Yeah, what the heck? Yeah. I, you know what? I do think if the cotillion had been run this year, I think we'd have seen her here. But since it wasn't, this was the spot. She is a really good filly. Yes, she she opens up at six to one. And Dick, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about New York traffic. Absolutely. The local horses back in the Preakness Stakes, and you're going to get 15 to one in the morning line. Yeah, look, whatever could go wrong, could go wrong. Lost a shoe in the Derby. I don't think they were happy with the ride. I think they would have rather tried for the front. Horatio Caramano is a great front riding rider who knows the Maryland circuit is going to ride, and I think you're going to see New York traffic out there. That's why I say this pace scenario is going to be very different than what we saw in Kentucky. Dick, let's get to our local race of the week. It's a one-mile optional claimer, third-level allowance condition. They could begin for $50,000, although nobody was entered for the claiming price here. Dick, we scratched down to a field of five, very competitive field. Number one, compounded. Goes off at even money. Frankie Pennington for Georgie Duarte. Had a big break between the end of his three-year-old season and the start of his four-year-old year. A troubled trip last time out. But, Dick, this is that dangerous third start back off the layoff. Yeah, and I think the theory is if he can get back to that form, as you said, Keith, from 2019, then he's, he's obviously very much the most likely winner. Second choice, number three, <laughs> Epic Dreamer is 2-1 to one for trader Kelly Breen. He's put up some huge numbers going short, but I think he hasn't had the same kind of success when he goes around two turns. Has not, and congratulations to Kelly, by the way, who just won the training title at Monmouth Park, which is his home base, and I know that meant a lot to him. Local race of the week for $45,000. Here's the call. First quarter was 24-3 and three for Compounded, who goes to the 5-8 pole, then they get by just over length. Epic Graver continues to track second. Whistling Bird lays to the outside of the top pair. Covered up at the inside is long shot jump for Alex. And tie ball well within striking range fifth at the back. After a half and 48 seconds flat, it's compound it. They head to the far turn in pursuit of compound it. The lead is almost a length and a half. Epic Graver looking to quicken now. Jump for Alex on the inside. Compound it lets it out just a notch now. Midway on the turn, compound it in front almost three lengths. Jump for Alex has taken second. Epic Dreamer, no response right now. Tybalt hung out to the extreme outside. Whistling Birds has dropped out last. Compounded, just under a hand ride, will turn for home with a clear lead. Down to the last furlong. Compounded to three and a half. Jump for Alex, though. Manning a strong bit on the outside. Here comes Jump for Alex surging. Compounded, Jump for Alex. And Jump for Alex will run by to take the lead. Compounded back to second. It will be Jump for Alex. Well, Dick, no compounded, no epic dreamer. How about number two, jump for Alex? Nine to one here, the longest price of the board for some guy named, how about Lupe? <laughs> Lupe Preciado draws off to win a length and a half. He's $21.40 to win. Dick, jump for Alex. He won at six to one. Yep. He wins at seven to one. <laughs> he wins at nine to one. Dick, he doesn't get much respect. Now, and you made the point earlier, Keith, about the, the other horse, third off the layoff. This was his third yeah. off the layoff. The paper didn't look that good, but... Eventually, Lupe gets them back where they're that supposed is. to be, and they win at 9-1. to one. And that's career number 1,993 <laughs> for Lupe. Not that anyone's counting around here. Dick, let's get to our first break. We got back here on Let's Go Racing. We're going to spend some time with Randy Allen. We'll be back with Randy after this. Turning for Home is a nonprofit that has provided nearly 2,800 former racehorses with a safe retirement. The program was created through the foresight of the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. We all love animals, and to give back to something that helps us so much, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Responding to the need for a better system that addressed the uncertain future for the retiring equine population at Parks Racing, the PTHA rallied horsemen to support the program. These horses can do anything from hunter jump to Western to therapeutic riding. Turning for Home became the first on-track retirement program at our year-round racetrack. We want to make sure that our horses that have run so well for us over the years get the great opportunity to get a new vocation. Out of everything that we've done in Pennsylvania for racing, I think that's the thing we can be most proud of. If you would like to help these amazing animals find a great second career and forever home, please give us a call or contact us at turningforhome.org. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings.
Welcome back, everyone, to Park Racing for Let's Go Racing. It's time to welcome in this week's guest. It's none other than trainer Randy Allen. And Randy, thanks for joining us. A little bit of uh, success right now in your barn, and a lot of it is around a young filly that's very exciting, named Pink Caddy. Tell us a little bit about her. Yeah, uh, me and Nick picked her up in Timonium as a yearling. We were under bidders on Call Paul, and that's her brother. Right. And we went down there and was. <laughs> I was definitely wanting to get her, and I was hoping she wouldn't go too high, and she ended up going for 40000 we ended up getting her. Well, she has that uh, kind of just off the pace style that plays so well, but uh, not only that, but she just is very determined. She gives her best every single time, and you couple that with the talent that she has, that's a pretty good combination. She just doesn't want to be beat. If she sees a horse in front of her, she wants to go chase her down, and that's probably her greatest accomplishment is she just doesn't want to be beat. And if she keeps that attitude, which uh, it seems like she's always going to have it, uh, I think that she'll do well in the future. Randy, the most emotional part of PA Day was when you won the race, Pink Caddy, for Nick Sapanero, who was your great friend who passed away in December. Tell everybody about your relationship with Nick and how far back it goes. Oh, me and Nick go back about uh, anywhere from 17 to 20 years. Uh, he was like my father. He was a friend. We went to Las Vegas. We went to uh, Caesar's Palace. Went on stage with jo Elton John. Uh, we went to breakfast every Wednesday. I had dinner at his house on Friday, Saturday night. They brought dinner over. Uh, he was more of a friend than he was an owner. And now you have a horse named after him, Sapanera, that you bought a couple of years ago, just broke his maiden. Tell us about Sapanera and what that means. I bought him as a yearling, and I was looking at the horse, and the horse, you know, it seemed like he was going to be a pretty decent horse. And I'm like, boy, if I'm putting this name on you, you better run. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be getting the stink out from Nick upstairs. So, But the horse came out, I stuck it out, and won pretty impressively. Randy, we had a chance to talk about the victory with Pink Caddy in uh, Pennsylvania Day at the races and what it meant to you. But uh, then here comes Sapanara after that. And as they're turning for home and Sapanara is in front, uh, my thoughts went to you. Tell us what your emotions were during the stretch run of that race. Well, when I seen him break from the gates, I'm like, yeah, say he's doing well. And then he turned up at home and I seen him switch leads. And I'm like, well, I'm off the hook on this one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of emotions came up. When I, matter of fact, when you started calling your name and that's Sapanera, yeah, the emotions came yeah. to the head then. And Randy, just quickly back to Pink Caddy. Do you have any idea what her next spot is and when we might see her again? I'm hoping to find another stake for her. You know, uh, I'd like to run her in an allowance race. She's running out of condition pretty quickly. We're going to have to work on Dave to get us a race road. <laughs> Well, all the best and uh, congratulations on the recent success and, of course, the recent success with the horses and Nick. Randy, thanks and for joining us today. Nick. You got it. <laughs> well, let's get to our national coverage. It's brought to you by Chapman Auto Group. Unless our emblem is on the back of your car or truck, you probably pay too much. And we start our national coverage out at Santa Anita with the great one, Awesome Again. They'll go one mile and one-eighth for $300,000. Dick, and it's headed, of course, by Maximum Security. Gets bet down to one to two here. Now, Dick, he came off the long layoff with mm -hmm. the barn switch into the Bafford barn. Did yep. not look great, although he did win yep. the first time coming back. And then yep. he went to Del Mar, and he looked much better winning the uh, Pacific Classic. He did. He got a 107. Now, look, he beat a, basically a turf horse in Sharp Samurai. It wasn't, it wasn't a great field. And I'll tell you this, Keith, looking at his works prior to the Pacific Classic versus this, I thought he worked much better going into Del Mar than he did for this race. And we'll explain a little more after we get right. through this, what's going uh, on. We talked about it, too, the whole, uh, the, the way that he was trained. Uh, Jason trains him completely different than Couldn't Tom, be so he had to different. get all used to that. Yep. Dick, the second choice, also out of the Baffert Barn. It's number two, and probably he's nine to five, of course, his uh, problems at the gate are well documented. Yep. But, Dick, he's now coming off back-to-back -back grade one wins, and he's putting up some big numbers yeah, now. People may forget this, but he was the favorite in last year's Derby, Preakness, and Pennsylvania Derby. Failed in all of them, but the talent was always there. Boy, as he showed it in the last two. Wins the Gold Cup at San Anito, wins the Whitney, and you watch his works coming in, this horse was clearly ready. Great one. Awesome again. Here's the call. Take the 101. Leads the field to the half-mile pole in the awesome again. Maximum security puts his head into second. Sleepy eyes, Todd. Midcourt keeping pace with that pair. Still another four back to improbable. It's been a lonely lead for take the 101. He controls the pace and goes on with it. Leads by two and a half lengths now. Sleepy eyes, Todd. 
Maximum security has work to do between horses. Here comes Improbable from the back of the field. Midcourt is just in front of him. A quarter to go, take the 101, still with a two-length lead. Improbable finding his best stride. He's starting to move in. Maximum security will be in between them, but it's Improbable who has taken command with an authoritative run from last to first. Well, Dick, maximum security does not get the lead. He really doesn't seem to fire that much. Improbable, who sits back early, makes a big run, Dick, and he goes on to win by four and a half lengths. That's three consecutive <laughs> grade ones now for Improbable. Pays $5.60 to win. Dick, he's becoming a star. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, if the Breeders' Cup Classic was run today, he would be the favorite. And, of course, if he wins, he'll be the horse of the year. 108 buyer in this win. That's a career top. He's now 105, 106, 108. Having said all that, he got the setup of life, obviously, with the four speed horses battling it out. I thought maximum security was heroic, Keith, because he you could see he was uncomfortable. He was in between horses. They were going fast, yet he still wouldn't let midcourt go by him. I texted Baffert the next day with the number, and I said, boy, Max's workouts just didn't look as good. He said he hates Santa Anita. He hates the crowd. So let's go to the Breeders' Cup Classic, right, in, in several weeks. You, if it's a race where there's not a lot of speed and maximum security's out there by himself, somebody's going to have to run hard to pass this horse because you know what I mean he got passed in this race but he doesn't get passed in the stretch this is because the circumstances were that yep. maximum security's now run 13 times 11 times he's been first yeah. twice he's been second and of course one of the times he got DQ'd but still a really neat horse uh, don't write him off yeah. quite yet Dick, uh, time of the year when we get to start looking at some two-year-olds, some serious two-year-olds. We're going to stay at Santa Anita for the Grade One American Pharaoh, one mile and one sixteenth. Again, three hundred thousand dollars. Who else saddles the favorite? It's Bob again, <laughs> Maverick with number five, Spielberg. That son of Union ranks has uh, did not win his maiden race. Yep. Then jumps right into the Grade One Del Mar Futurity, and Dick comes into another Grade One race yep. without a victory right. and an even money favorite. Yeah, he lost to the same horse twice, Dr. Scheibel, who's actually been put on the bench for the rest of the year, not hurt. Baffert is going for win number 10 in the American Pharaoh, and one of the horses that won the American Pharaoh was, in fact, American Pharaoh. <laughs> Dick, Dick, the second choice, number one touchdown, Brown is 4-1 for uh, trainer Rafael Becerra. Now, Dick has been sprinting against state Brent, so this is a whole different ballgame. It is Calbred, uh, last race, best buyer speed figure of a 75. This isn't a particularly fast group, and it's kind of wide open. I knew Baffert was the favorite because he's Baffert. Yep. I mean, I understood all that. I just wasn't as sure about him in this spot as others. Spielberg's even money. Here's the call. Dynamite shows the way. Leads it by a length. Get her number is in second. Spielberg settles down at the rail. A notable exception is just outside of him. Two and a half lengths off the lead. Five and a half furlongs from home. Wasperant in the clear on the outside. Has four lengths to make up. Then touchdown Brown and Rombauer. Down the back stretch they go. The long shot, Dynamite, three quarters of a length, get her number in second, Spielberg is down at the rail. Then notable exception, fourth, three lengths off the lead, Wasperint, touchdown Brown, and Rombauer, not much change. Dynamite has been the speed throughout, prompted by get her number in second. Notable exception is in between horses. Wasprint making steady progress on the outside. He and Spielberg are moving together as notable exception now bows out. Rombauer, white cap, circling the field on the outside, putting in a dangerous bid as Get Her Number has the lead. Touchdown Brown is second to last. They turn for home, Get Her Number, and Rombauer go on with it. These two arrive at the top of the stretch, one, two, and Get Her Number strong on the front end, chased intently by Rombauer. Three lengths back to Spielberg in third, a 16th to go. Flavien Pratt imploring Get Her Number to finish the job, and he is going to do it. Well, Dick, I don't bet horses just because of their names, uh -huh. but when I'm looking over the names, this, this is a name I like. Get her number. <laughs> Eight to one for trainer Peter Miller. Wins by three quarters of a leg pays $18.20 to win. Had two career starts on the dirt, or excuse me, on the grass, yep. which is to the dirt, as now a grade one winner. And really well named a uh, son of dialed in. Yeah. Get her number. So well done. 84 buyer. Keith, I would say as I looked at the two-year-olds in the East versus the two-year-olds in the West when we get to Keeneland for the uh -huh. Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I think the two-year-olds in the East are dramatically better than the ones in the West. We'll find out, of course, obviously, okay. when we get to Keeneland. Let's keep it at Santa Anita, the big sprint race of the weekend, the Great True Santa Anita Sprint Championship. Of course, six furlongs, $200,000 purse, number four, CZ Rocket. 
The 7 to 5 choice again, trader Peter Miller, Dick, a $40,000 claim, and since that claim has not lost. Yeah, this was a nice horse prior to the claim, but as you said, Keith, yeah. four for four, and the figures keep ascending, 97 last time, won a grade two. And look, Peter Miller is one of the best out on the West Coast. We, we just showed him winning the uh, American Pharaoh, and he's got the favorite here at CZ Rocket. Well, speaking of not losing, how about yeah. number one, Collusion Illusion, who's the second choice at 9 to 5, and he has never lost a sprint race. Now, 5 for 5, the only race he got beaten in was, was the American Pharaoh last year when he was pulled up in Vandolph, and obviously that was just too far. So, yeah, he's a neat horse. His only issue is he's got the one hole. Right. There's a ton of speed outside of him. Here's the call of the Santa Anita Sprint. Heading to the 3 8 Flagstaff in charge. Three quarters of a length, CZ Rocket. Giant expectations on the outside third. Collusion Illusion. Red Silks at the rail has two lengths to make up. And then Desert Law. Approaching the quarter pole, Flagstaff by a neck. CZ Rocket. Giant expectations. Collusion Illusion looking for room, finding it down at the rail, and here he comes. Here comes Collusion Illusion down at the rail, trying to run down Flagstaff, who has a short lead, and CZ Rocket with those big strides on the outside. CZ Rocket has collared Flagstaff close to home, but if Flagstaff keeps fighting, CZ Rocket, Flagstaff, CZ Rocket. Dick Flagstaff <laughs> almost won last time out yep. in, in the great two, Pat O'Brien. Gives his heart, yep. you know, everything he's got, and gets, this time he can't hold again. off CZ Rocket. He yep. loses another heartbreaker. CZ Rocket now five consecutive wins <laughs> off the claim. Wins by a head, $4.80 to win. Dick, what kind of number did he put up? Yeah, ni n really nice claim, you know, high 90s number. Right. It's not the kind of number you think is going to win the Breeders' Cup, but, you know, maybe. Right. We'll find out. And interestingly, Peter Miller has won the Breeders' Cup sprint twice with Roy H, yeah. and he's coming back with another one. And, boy, if you just said on the 30th of April, CZ Rocket is yeah. going to be his fa maybe the favorite in the Breeders' Cup. So we go, well, who is that? Never heard of him. Well, let's get to our next break. We got back here on Let's Go Racing. We have awards to give out and some other action to take a look at. Stay with us. We will be right back after this. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Buter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the Mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing. Have to go out those weekly awards brought to you by the great Turning for Home program. Log on to their website at turningforhome.org and get involved with that great retirement program today. Dick, our jockey of the week, Ruben Silvera. He had a four-win week last week. And, Dick, it's not bad when you ride for the Jamie Ness bar. Yes, cause you're, it's always a good place <laughs> yeah, to be right now. But he did have a four-win day, so <laughs> he gets that on. Our trainer of the week is, how about Joe Taylor? We haven't mentioned Joe a whole lot. Bart a little bit slow to get started after the break, but yep. starting to make some noise. So Joe Taylor, our trainer of the week. Let's get to Race Recap, brought to you by Pewter Stable. Log on to their website at pewterstable.com. Become an owner today. Let's go to Churchill Down. It's the Grade Three Ack Ack. It's a one-turn mile. Dick, a one-turn mile mm -hmm. is different from a two-turn mile. Indeed. Number one, Warriors Charge, the six to five favorite for trainer Brad Cox. Those familiar colors of ten-strike racing. Dick, just a wicked pace. Warriors Charge can't hold up. A great trip for who's this? How about Mr. Money? Yeah, he's back. We haven't seen him really at all since the Pennsylvania Derby run any good. He was just had one bad race after yep. another, but. Well, he was good here, and Warriors Charge, as you said, just got caught in the pace meltdown. They just went three quarters, 109.11, and they wanted to get the dirt mile 
Marshall told me, look, they're just going to pack it up for this year and come back next year looking for two turns where you can get an easy lead and those good purses at Oaklawn Park next uh, next winter. Mr. Bunny, 6-1, to one, pays 1480 to win out to Santa Anita, the big grass race of the weekend, the grade two John Henry Turf Championship, a mile and a quarter. Dick number three, United, gets bet down to three to five for Dick Mandela. Dick, he jumped onto the scene last year, finishing just a head behind bricks and mortar, yep. 51 to one. Dick, he is one terrific grass horse. Yeah, he's a really neat horse, and in this circumstance, this is why Flavian Pratt is such a good rider. There was no pace in yeah. the race. This is a horse that's never been in front. He says, well, why don't I just go out there yeah. and set small, slow fractions, and nobody's gonna be able to go by him. Riginair is a nice horse, comes on for second for uh, Jeff Mullins, but United never in doubt, and he'll go on to the Breeders' Cup turf, and we're waiting to see who's coming. We know Enable's going for their third arc, Boy, wouldn't it be great to see her come back? We, we haven't heard that yet, but that would be funny to you. Dick, United just puts up one terrific race he, after he's another. He's so good. It's a great two chandelier for two-year-old fillies at one mile and one sixteenth. Who has the favorite? Of course, it's Baffert. <laughs> no, number one, course. Princess Nor is uh, bet down to one to five. Dick has been winning by daylight. How about eight and a quarter this time? Yeah, this race has had a few different names, but by whatever name, Baffert now has 12 wins <laughs> in the chandelier, and this might have been one of the easier ones. Only a 78 buyer, so I think we're. I think she's beating really slow horses. Okay. But boy, she looks really good doing it. That's for sure. Two dollars and forty cents to win a multiple Grade One winner now with just three lifetime starts. Dick, it's eye on racing, and Dick, as I got ready for the show, you talk about big weekends. I think we need like a two-hour special yeah. next week on Let's Go Racing. Yep. We have five, ten, fifteen. How about uh, twenty-one graded races over the right, weekend? Right, and obviously the big card is going to be down at Pimlico, where they have stakes races from beginning to end. They basically did what New York's done on Belmont Day, just put all their big stakes because they're meeting ends. It's a six-day meet. What a day at Pimlico, of course, culminating with the previous. 21 <laughs> graded stakes. We need that two-hour yes, special. Let's wrap it up. We'll be right back with news and notes after this. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Pewter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. Racehorses are pampered, treated with care, and loved. Nothing is more important than their health and their safety. We do right by them. And they do right by us. The hardworking folks who proudly earn our living. In Pennsylvania's horse racing. And breeding industries. Horse racing is a lot of fun. But it's so much more. It provides tens of thousands of jobs. 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 And billions in economic impact each year. All across the Commonwealth. Horse racing in Pennsylvania. It's a winner. Welcome back, everyone, to Parks Racing for Let's Go Racing News and Notes. The final segment brought to you by the Granny Fund. Get involved with continued education on the backstretch. Do it with the Granny Fund. He's our man, Bruce Casella, Dick Girardi, Keith Jones, and Dick. We wrap up, as we said yeah. at the beginning of the show, the triple ground season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A great field for the Preakness. Yep. Dick, uh, every time I pick against Baffert, yes, of course, he uh, wins. not usually a good idea, but Dick, I think Art Collector has a terrific chance to win. Yeah, I do too. I, he's probably going to be my pick. I'll reserve the right to change it. We're doing this early right. in the week, but I think the fact that he's gotten the time, Authentic hasn't, yep, exactly. and I think he's a really good horse, but it's hard to pick against the man <laughs> who's going for Preakness win number, I don't know, 100, yeah. it seems like. Watch, I'll, I'll say it here, and, and then it'll win 1,000 words. Watch, we're all watching. <laughs> well, authentic. Watch, it's going to be 1,000 words. Come out and enjoy all of that action this weekend right here at Parks Racing, and we'll see you for live racing again Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 12.55. And Dick and I'll see you next week on Let's Go Racing.